these double notch bases I've been making lately. Um, never really messed too much with double notch filters um, until recently. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys go right for the, the hybrid stuff in here, like the, the modern talking, of course, or, you know, I see a lot of, uh, probably you see a lot of this, this digi grain on guys' stuff. Um, you know, I use a lot of saw waves and uh, square waves and, saw, and just signs. Um, and in the instance of this particular sound alone, I mean, it's just uh, a lot of the sounds just coming from... <laughs> This double notch filter. Really not much of it's coming from that. You know, and I just have this LFO working that cutoff. You know, and obviously when I make a sound like this, um, I'm typically going to process it on the back end, which is what you want to do to make your stuff sound not so stock. And you might use something like, you know, homicides. You know, if you have homicide, awesome. If not, there's a lot of other, even just the saturator in Ableton works really good. You know, you can. You know, you can solo out these frequencies and build, you can tailor your sound. That sounds like shit. Um, how much beef that's given it. You know, it's giving it a lot of extra. And then something else that works really good, <clears throat> um, you know, when you're making your sounds is, uh, you know, guys like, like Big Chocolate, again, he will use a lot of, like, you know, flangers and phasers on his bases to get that. And... You know, you don't need a lot. But, you know, maybe enough to squeeze it, you know, maybe a little down sampling. Um, you just got to play around. That's really cool. Um, you just got to play around and experiment. Um, you know, some other things I really like doing is, uh, you know, I'll use like this amp. That's pretty... How much like presence that's giving it, um, you know. Obviously, you're gonna want at some point compress this sound. I usually compress several bases together because um, most of my sounds are layered. Um, you know, another little trick is bumping the frequency uh, between three and four uh, kilohertz is the most audible frequency of the human ear, and uh, if you really want something to stick out, um, you know, bump, bump it around that area. You know, and then once I would do something like that, um, you know, to further process this. Actually, a lot of times what I might do, which I've been doing lately, actually now, that works really good, is I'll put this on. I'll make that a C, actually make it a C3. Um, so I have that sound. Now I'll freeze this track and I'll just option click and just drag that into an audio track. So now it becomes audio. So I got it there. And then what I'll do is I'll load up a sampler. You know, or simpler if you don't have sampler. This is the, the live suite. Um, but if you just have live, uh, and you don't have that, you can use simpler as well. Um, and I just drag this in there. And now... And now you have further control over 
it and then uh, you know you can put it in any key you want because sometimes um, when you're making bass patches you'll notice that uh, they respond you'll get more of what you want out of a different frequency um, say that your the song you're writing is in is an E but for some reason the bass patch just sounds better being played in uh, <laughs> in like G um, when you hit a G note well you know you know sample that out and put it in you know in your sampler <laughs> And it'll fix that problem. Uh, that's something that took me a while to figure out when I was first starting to produce. I was trying to trying to just make everything out of uh, straight out of massive, and um, you know, not everything would sound that awesome all the time. So that's a uh, that's a little bit on a it's a little bit on making a uh, sound design and basses.